Each year begins with our classrooms being filled with all the new faces for the coming year. Faces reflective of the innocence of being a child. Faces lit with the excitement and eagerness that a new school year brings. Our school year ends with the memories of a full year of growth and change. We watch children come and go, often forgetting that they have a world beyond the walls of this school. Each year, one million children are victims of child abuse in the United States. Most of the connections outside a child's family are found here at school, like the school bus driver, the food service worker, the paraprofessional, and of course, the teacher. Over half of all victims are under the age of seven. In the world of children, things of importance take on a whole new meaning with different priorities. It's important to have someone to hold you when you are scared, someone to smile at you when you've done something special, someone to hug you when you are feeling bad, and to encourage you when things are difficult. Sometimes a child's world gets shattered by the very people the child looks to most for love and trust the adults in their lives. Eight out of ten abusers are a parent or relative. Child abuse is a difficult subject for everyone. It's one of those situations we would all like to pretend is not happening in our community. But it is. Educational personnel are the largest group of mandated reporters to report child abuse. Child abuse affects us all. Well, we may not think that anyone we know would hurt a child, but most people who abuse children don't plan on hurting children either. But whether we know someone who abuses a child or not is not the point. The point is that all individuals who work with children as part of their employment are mandated reporters. Mandated reporters are required by law to report any suspicion of child abuse to the proper authorities. Mandated reporters in your school would include teachers, principals, child care providers, classroom paraprofessionals, food service employees, custodians, secretaries, crossing guards, nurses, and bus drivers. The mere fact that you're watching this video means that you are a mandated reporter. I'm a mandated reporter? Well, how do I know what to report? And what if I'm wrong? I know it's pretty scary to be reporting child abuse, but it's also scary to be abused, too. There are some simple signs that will help you see child abuse. You might see bruises in the shape of a belt buckle, clothes hanger, or stick. You can see bruises that are different colors from the different time I was abused. Bruises on the back of your leg or on your neck or on the palm of your hand may not be an accident. Bruises on my ears at the corners of my mouth can mean I was abused too. And remember, it's hard to see bruises on dark-skinned children like me. I could have burns in the shapes of different things like an iron or a curling iron. If I just accidentally bumped into one of those things, I would only have one deep edge burn because it would have been hot and I would have pulled away quickly. If you put me in hot water, you would see the lines where the water had been. Sometimes the burns might look like gloves or socks. Small round bones might be from cigarettes. Burns on the tips of my fingers could have been from having my hand held a lighter or candle. Bald spots on my head might mean that someone has pulled my hair up. So, I need to pay attention to suspicious bruises, burns, and bald spots and explanations for them that aren't consistent or don't make sense. What else should I notice? I may be acting a lot. I may want to spend lots of time at school. You know, come early, early, leave late, I may not want to go home. 
how I act might tell you that something is wrong, I will probably be real afraid to make a mistake. mistake. If I do make a mistake, I will freeze and I might act, act different. a lot. You know, real quiet one minute, then real loud the next. Sometimes I, I won't let myself. I may be real sad and get hopeless. I may have a hard time believing that my life will, will ever, ever get better. In fact, my future doesn't look that bright. I am more likely to drop out of school, become a teenage parent, and hurt my own children or, or hurt others. As I get older, I may use drugs and think more and more about suicide. I may even end up in prison. 90% of adult prisoners report being abused as children. Wow, that's a lot to remember. That's only physical abuse. There are other kinds of abuse you have to be on the lookout for too. You're right, there are other types of abuse. Children can also be abused emotionally. Emotional abuse occurs when a parent's interaction consistently undermines or destroys a child's sense of self-worth. For example, some parents never praise the efforts of their children and always call them names like dummy or stupid or idiot. Reporting is not about getting anyone into trouble. Reporting is about getting families the help that they need. All parents get mad and upset with their children. Emotional abuse is a pattern of behaviors and usually is present in all types of abuse. In addition to calling the child names, a parent tells the child on a regular basis things like, I wish you had never been born. If you just behave, I wouldn't have to drink. You're the most ungrateful child. Also, children that are ignored by their families are being emotionally abused. It's hard to feel good about yourself when no one acts like you're even there. Emotional abuse includes verbal abuse, rejecting a child, unrealistic expectations, and shameful forms of punishment. You need to be aware of some of the typical behaviors in emotionally abused children. Behaviors such as rocking, sucking, biting, and headbanging. Other results of emotional abuse may be sleep problems, tics, compulsions, and phobias. Also, speech disorders, lags in physical development, and a failure to thrive could all be signs of emotional abuse in children. Emotional abuse is the most difficult type of abuse to treat, and it has the longest lasting negative impact upon a child's physical and mental well-being. What about sexual abuse? Sexual abuse is the use of a child any age, my age or his age, for sexual pleasure. Children may also sexually abuse other children. Most child sexual abuse is not reported. Sexual abuse is the most underreported form of abuse because it is so secretive. It's hard to detect and very difficult for victims to report. Therefore, mandated reporters must know the warning signs. Before their 16th birthday, approximately one in four girls and one in six boys are sexually abused. That is five children in this class alone. Over 70% of children who were sexually abused had their abuse last more than five years. Physically, children may have difficulty walking or sitting or complain of pain in the genital or rectal areas. Some children may constantly clear their throats or have stomach pains which have no physical origin. Behaviors you may see in sexually abused children include an unusual knowledge of sexual acts and language inappropriate for the child's age. They may have a preoccupation with their own sexual organs and other children's and adults' sexual organs. Some children act out sexually, while other children withdraw or regress. You may notice that they have suddenly developed an intense fear or dislike for a particular person. Sexually abused children are sometimes unwilling to participate in phys ed classes. The children will dress in layers, and their hygiene sometimes suffers. Neglect is the most common form of child abuse and the leading cause of child death from abuse. Child neglect can be thought of as a failure of parents or caregivers to adequately provide for a child's emotional, physical, intellectual, and social well-being. That would include a failure to attend school. Neglect is a pattern of behaviors and it occurs in all socioeconomic levels. However, it is true that poverty can be a contributing factor. You may see parents who don't provide adequate supervision due to problems or misplaced priorities. Parents with addictions may not be able to care for their children. 
Neglected children may also have untreated illnesses and disabilities. Being poor is not the same as being neglected or abused. I often see children come into school, either they're dirty or they're not dressed for the weather. Is that neglect? Is that neglect? What about kids that are always asking for food or lunch money? That's neglect when I always come to school hungry. What are some other signs of neglect I need to be aware of? Hogs with excessive garbage, vicious animals, or access to weapons may indicate signs of neglect. But it's not always the outside. I know a girl who's an anorexic, and her parents won't take her to the doctor. It may also be a home with domestic violence between adults and may cause a threat to the child. It could also be a home where parents use and make drugs. Often in the case of neglect, parents are just lacking in resources or knowledge or have a substance abuse problem. With appropriate treatment and services, these families can be helped to better care for their children. But it's up to you, the mandated reporter, to report to your school social worker or school counselor so that they can be helped. Thank you. There's just so much information to remember. Well, you know, you don't have to remember it all. Our school system has a policy that explains everything in great detail. And every school has a designated reporter. And if you have any questions, just go to them. That's usually the school counselor or the school social worker or perhaps the school principal. Look, I just don't have time to deal with this right now. You're a school social worker. How would you handle it? You deal with this every day. Children bring problems from home to school with them. Making a verbal report to a school counselor or a social worker takes very little time. Just 10 minutes of your time could give a child a lifetime, or at least the opportunity for a better life. You know, you always tell us that we have choices to make. Now you have a choice. You can spend less of your time now or more later. And don't tell me you get to choose what laws you want to obey. But what if I'm wrong? Legally, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, just as long as you report in good faith. Reporting in good faith means that you've given careful thought to what you saw and heard. You're making a report not to hurt, but to help. Each of us is like a link in a chain to keep children safe. It takes all of us working together to prevent child abuse, and we're all only as strong as our weakest link. Experts agree that most child abuse still goes unreported. Why aren't you reporting? Please report. Please report. Please report. Please report. You can make a difference. It's a perfect It's a perfect crime.